Welcome to another video. Let's take some limit of multivariable functions. We're going to be doing the same thing we usually would do if it was a single variable function as you did in calculus one and in calculus two, but you just have more than one variable now and there's nothing really strange. You just have to do your algebra correctly. And if you're good on that, you should find this one very easy. Let's get into it. So just as we did when we took limits in calculus one or calculus two, whenever you get a limit and the point you're given is finite, just plug in the finite point and see what you get. And that's what you do every time you get a limit problem because the numbers here are three and two, there is no infinity. What we do first is we try to plug in the numbers. If it works out, then that's our answer. If it doesn't work out, then we have to devise a strategy. So let's plug in two for X and plug in three. I mean, plug in three for X and plug in two for Y. This is gonna be equal to, if I plug in two here, it's gonna, I mean, three is gonna be three multiplied by two divided by, this is gonna be three plus two, and my answer is six over five. I'm done, that's the limit. It's easy, right? Okay, let's go to the next one. This one, it's another finite point that you're given. So the first thing you do also is to plug in the numbers. So if I plug in one for X and plug in one for Y, this is what's gonna happen. This is gonna become two times one minus one times one, which is one, minus one times one, which is one. So it's two minus one minus one, which gives me zero on top. In the bottom, I'm gonna get one times one minus one times one, which is zero. So I have a zero over zero, zero situation. The problem in this case is we're not gonna be using L'Hopital's rule. So you better know how to do your factoring or use other strategies that are used in this case. So if I cannot use L'Hopital's rule, factoring must be my greatest strength when it comes to this kind of uh, exercise. So how can we factor just to see um, what can come out of this? Can we factor this? Is this a quadratic? Yes, actually, this is a quadratic because you can factor this by splitting this in the middle and writing it instead as minus 2xy plus xy. Okay, you have to be able to do that. So what I'm going to do is say this is equal to um, the limit as the point x, y approaches the point one, one, we have two x squared minus two x, y plus x, y minus y squared. Okay, divided by x squared minus y squared. Now, how did I know this is what I'm supposed to write? Well, I just solved that, remember that puzzle thing? You multiply two by minus one, you get minus two, and then the bottom is minus one, and you say, what two numbers will I multiply to get minus two? And if I add them together, I'm gonna to get minus one, while it's minus two times one. And that's what I just did, minus two times one. So if I factor this, what I'm gonna get would be what's common to both of them. I can take out two x, so I'm gonna end up with two x, what, what's common to these two, it's y, 2x plus y, okay? And what's going to be left on the inside is going to be x minus y, x minus y over, now this is difference of two squares, I can write it as x plus y times x minus y, okay? So clearly this can cancel this out. So you see that the toughest part of this is just factoring, which is an algebra skill. Okay, so if we take this out, we take this out, what we have left is gonna be the limit as the point x, y approaches one, one of, this is what is left, two x plus y divided by x plus y. Well, we can easily plug in our one for x, one for y, we're gonna end up with two, so this is equal to two plus one over one plus one, which is three over two. So the limit of this is three halves. Okay, now 
There are other strategies you can use to compute your limit, but if it is obviously algebraic manipulation, just do it. It is usually easier or maybe sometimes tougher. Okay, let's go to the third one. This one is a little tricky because the finite point we have is the point zero, zero. And if we plug in zero for each of X and Y, you're gonna end up with zero over zero. Now, that's a similar situation to what we had here initially. So remember the next thing you're supposed to do is to say, I need to factor the top and the bottom. Unfortunately, there's nothing you can factor here. But this is actually a very nice one because it is plain and simple. What I mean by that is on a plane, you have many different directions you can approach a point. So you can tell yourself, instead of me just getting stuck with zero, zero, what if I tell myself I'm going to approach this point through a function that gets rid of either of the two variables? And how do you do that? You just have to do a substitution and say, mm, what if I say, let y be equal to x cubed? You see, this makes life a lot easier because if y is equal to x cubed, you see, that's what is standing next to it. So instead of you writing y, you just replace y with x cubed. And instead of writing y here, you replace it with x cubed. Because it's a plane, this is a function that will go through the point zero, zero. How do you know it's gonna go through the point zero, zero? Well, when x is zero, y is zero. So you know that function is a valid function. So if you use it here, what do you end up getting? You're gonna get the limit as the point x, y approaches zero, zero. This is now gonna end up becoming, instead of you writing y, you're gonna end up with x cubed times x cubed, which is gonna be x to the sixth. And on the bottom, what are you gonna have? You're gonna end up with, um, wait, let's write this first because that's not correct. And then this is x to the sixth plus y squared will become the limit because now the new function you're gonna have will only contain x, so you just have to say the limit as x approaches zero. And then you're gonna have, oh, this is y, come on. So you're gonna have x to the sixth over, this is gonna be x to the sixth plus, this is gonna be x cubed squared, which is x to the sixth also. Huh. And this is gonna work out to be the limit as x approaches zero. And this is gonna be x to the sixth over two x to the sixth, which is gonna be the limit as x goes to zero of one over two, which is one half. So you get one half if you do this strategy. Does that mean this is the limit? No, that's the problem with multivariable functions. You don't know whether this is the limit because the li remember how we used to do the limit from the left has to be equal to the limit from the right. So the same thing, you have to pick multiple directions and make sure that all the directions you will ever pick will always give you the same answer. So let's try to find another direction. We just did, let y be equal to x cubed. We can do something else. What if we say, let x be equal to y? That's another direction. So if we now find another direction and the answers are not the same, then definitely the limit does not exist. If the answer is the same, we may have to try a third one just to confirm. Okay, maybe not the best method. Okay, so um, let x be equal to y. So if x equals y, this limit can become, you have um, the limit as x, y, approaches zero, zero of what we have, x cubed y over x to the sixth plus y squared will become the limit as x goes to zero. If x is equal to y, see what happens. This becomes, you replace this y with x, you're gonna have x to the fourth. You replace this y with x, this is gonna become x squared. So this becomes x to the sixth plus x squared. 
So this is x to the sixth plus x squared. What do you think we're going to get? Well, we can factor out x squared so that what we have will be the limit as x goes to zero. If you divide everything by x squared, you're going to end up with x squared over x to the fourth plus one. If you plug in zero, you're going to get zero over zero plus one, which is equal to zero over one, which is zero. Oh no. So this is not the same as this. So the conclusion is that the limit does not exist, does not exist. If coincidentally we got one half, you cannot say that the limit exists. You have to try another direction. If you get the same thing, try another direction. Well, you always hope that the limit does not exist every time you take this strategy because you're never, you're never sure that your answer is actually correct. Unless you choose to use polar coordinates and by that, you can always tell whether your limit exists or not. In another video, I'm gonna talk about that. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.